Hello, I am Silas Martin. I'm from Janssen Scientific Affairs, and I'm a director of Health Economics and Outcomes Research. And I, together with my colleagues from Janssen and some colleagues from the Swedish Institute of Health Economics, presented recently a, uh, an analysis at the American Diabetes Association in Chicago. And what we did at that, uh, with that analysis was we took some information from a uh, phase three clinical study that was a 26 weeks in length and took the outcomes of those study, that study to predict sort of the long-term health economic outcomes and costs that uh, one could expect over a, a lifetime from those patients using a, you know, a cohort of simulated patients uh, and also using a validated health economic model. So what this, what this did was it took the results of the study, um, so for example the HbA1c reductions, the blood pressure reductions, the weight reductions, as well as some of the lipid changes and infection rates over the 26 week period and uh, then took the, that result and then began to e extrapolate further um, using this validated model to uh, predict these outcomes. And uh, over the time of the simulation, what, what happens is when a patient, a simulated patient, gets below, uh, gets above the threshold of 8 HbA1c, then we model actually treatment intensification over time. So to give you a flavor of, of that, uh, throughout the simulation, uh, at year one, uh, we saw that 20% uh, and 13% of the patients simulated to take 100 and 300 milligrams of canagliflozin would progress their therapy versus 43% of those patients that were on uh, lifestyle management alone and did not start a treatment sequence with Invokana. So we're, we're actually comparing, like in the trial, uh, a treatment sequence that begins with Invokana or canagliflozin versus uh, a treatment sequence that did not begin with Invokana. So then, so the pro progression continues, and over the course of time, you see these cumulative effects of, of uh, reductions in, or just a, a cumulative effects of, of, of uh, simulated events. And what we observe is that over this 30-year uh, time horizon, that there is a relative risk reduction for the patients that started with the treatment with uh, canagliflozin relative to uh, not with canagliflozin, sort of lifestyle management alone. And that's on the order of about 36% for microvascular events, which are, you know, have been associated with uh, the uncontrolled blood sugar. And those things can be, those are, those are things like um, vision problems or nerve damage or kidney damage. So that's significant outcomes as well as we, 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 uh, we did simulate macrovascular events as well. So we saw some reductions on the order of 5 to 17% in those events. So, you know, w coupled with those events are, are costs that can accrue over time as well. So that's the second part of this health economic analysis is, is, is the cost piece. And over that, that treatment sequence, we, we uh, observed some cost reductions as well for the treatment arm starting with Invokana on the order of about $4,000 for the 100 or, or about $5,500 for the 300. So this, these are, again, simulated results of, of, of hypothetical patients, but can give a flavor of the of the long-term expectations of the drug, given we don't have data that extends the, over that period of time. We have short-term data right now, but what, what, it, what it means is that decision makers are, are trying to think about what, uh, what to do with this new class and this new, new you know, drug in the new class and uh, trying to make decisions about how to make it available to patients. And so this type of analysis can give a window into those expectations over a longer period of time. How this can be Im impactful for decision makers is it, it, like, it, can, it can help understand the long-term implications of, of the drug when we only have phase three data in hand. Um, Canagliflozin was, was studied in over 10,000 patients across a wide variety of settings from monotherapy all the way through to treatment with insulin. But uh, again, we only have shorter term data right now and this type of simulated uh, environment without, uh, you know, having to follow patients and wait over that long period of time for patients to ex ex kind of express those outcomes, we can get an idea of what, um, what the value can be to, a, to a, 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 a health system. Additionally, this is the first in a new class of agents um, which acts on the kidney. 
um, current agents uh, act more uh, outside the kidney. And uh, the way this acts is that it, it acts on a, the reuptake of glucose. So in the, in the kidney, there is um, normal ex ex sort of filtering of glucose and then reabsorption of glucose. And that actually um, contributes to the dysregulation of glucose in, in type 2 diabetes. And so what this drug does is it prevents the reabsorption of glucose in the kidney to some degree and promotes the excretion of that glucose into the urine. And in that way, can lower blood sugar and also leads to some of the other, uh, other benefits like uh, reductions in blood pressure, reduction in weight, but then can also lead to some increased infection rates or, um, uh, you know, over the, over, the, uh, over the course of the trial, we observed an increase of about 10% in, in, in infection rates. But many of these infections lead to, um, do not lead to discontinuation. So we did a lot, we, in this analysis, we simulated all of these elements of the drug, the benefits and the risks, to kind of give, a, again, this window into what could it be expected over the, over the, over the period of using the drug.